Hi, this is Bart Polson, and in uh, this set of videos, I'm going to be going over the uh, material that is in the practice final for the Behavioral Science 3010 Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences class that I teach at Utah Valley University. Um, what I've got up here on the screen are two files. On the left, I have the PDF that has the actual uh, practice final. Notice this one is uh, the revised version that got sent out that is grouped by topic. So, for instance, here it says variables and distribution slash graphics. And uh, this is what should be linked in Canvas. I've also got a little bit of scratch paper here over on the side in case i got to write anything down. Um, let me make this uh, PDF a little bit bigger right now. Um, okay, let's take a quick look here. I'm just going to go through each question and tell you what this, what's the answer and why. And the uh, actual final is very similar to this, so please, um, this is the best way to go. Okay, the first off here is number one. In a sample of women, the number of children that each woman has is an example of which level of measurement. Now, number of children is something that starts at zero and it goes up in whole steps. One, two, three. And so, um, it is an example of ratio. Remember, nominal simply means different categories like male, female. Um, ordinal means you can place them in order but without specifying how far apart they are. Interval means you can give the actual number of uh, you can measure the spaces in between things, and ratio has that also, but it adds on an absolute zero, which is what you have with the number of children. The second one, military ranks are an example of what level of measurement? Military ranks are ordinal because one person has a higher rank than another, but it doesn't specify how much higher. And then, again, it doesn't really matter. Whoever is higher uh, is in charge. And so military ranks are ordinal, not just not just nominal, because the ranks aren't just different, but some take precedence over the others. That's what makes that ordinal. The third one, let me scroll it up a little bit. Gender is an example of what level of measurement? Well, um, gender is simply different categories, and so it is nominal. Nominal means name. And it's because you can put numbers on them if you want, one, two, zero, one, whatever, but the order is arbitrary, and all they are indicating is that people are in different groups. Um, number four, which label would be most appropriate for describing the distribution below? Now this, uh, we've got to get it so you can see all the choices here. This, uh, I actually don't know what this is indicating here because the name at the bottom, CPET, GIFP, is, is very cryptic. But what you see is you've got a really tall bars at the left side and they go down to really low. And the box only goes out this far because there's still data. You can't see it here, but there's still these tiny little bumps at 100 and so. Anyhow, this one is definitely not normal because that means a bell curve. It's not flat acritic because be, that would be one that's really flat on the top. Um, it is, in fact, positively skewed because the extreme scores, which you can hardly even see, are here at the high end, that, you know, towards the positive numbers. If, the, if they were a bunch up here on the right and the extremes were on the bottom, then it would be negatively skewed. But this is positively skewed, again, because most of the people are really down low, and then you get extremes that are at the high end. It's the extremes, the outliers, that determine the direction of the skew. Number five, which label would be most appropriate for describing the distribution below? Well, this uh, distribution is not negatively skewed, because that means most people are high and there's a few down low. It's not leptocurtic, because that would mean that it's sort of really skinny and pointy. Um, Actually, I would say this one is normal. That means a bell curve, a very specific shape. It's symmetrical. It's unimodal. Most of the scores are in the middle. We got, you know, we got a little bar there sticking up, but you know, that may have more to do with the size of the bins than anything. A bimodal would be if it had two distinct peaks, and that's not the case here. Number six, which label would be most appropriate for describing the distribution below? And then it says a normal curve has been superimposed on the distribution for comparison. Well, mesocurtic, leptocurtic, and platocurtic have to do with really, in one sense, how pointy the distribution is or really the presence or absence of outliers. Um, mesocurtic, meso means middle, and curtic means uh, bulge or, you know, and meso is a normal distribution. This is a normal distribution because you see it's really close to the uh, normal distribution that's right on top. Leptocurtic would be a lot skinnier. It There would be big spaces uh, near the bottom and it'd be coming up through the top. Also, leptocurtic, it would be a lot of outliers. 
Uh, platocritic would be pretty flat on the top, and that's not what we see here. This one is really close to a normal distribution, so it is mesocritic. Number seven, in which of the following situations is the median an appropriate measure of central tendency? Uh, the first one says when the average is very high. Now, how high the average is is, is just totally irrelevant. It, you know, that doesn't affect anything. When the mode is less than 10, again, that's, uh, that doesn't really affect anything. Uh, the researcher has ordinal data. Now, this actually is an interesting one because that would be a good situation because the median is an ordinal statistic uh, because you have to put things in order, then you find the one that's halfway through. And so if you have ordinal, you're counting, you know, uh, first, second, third, and so forth, the median actually would be a good measure of central tendency in that particular situation. This last one, when the data set has an even number of scores, you know, that's just, that has nothing to do with anything. So those are just three ridiculous distractors. Number eight, which of the following is not true about the normal distribution? Okay, kurtosis is a statistic that indicates um, how, you know, really pinched the distribution is. And um, I think, I can't even remember what the normal, actually, you know what it's going to be? It's kurtosis is the answer here because the, on the normal distribution of bell curve, the level of kurtosis is zero. Um, and the other ones, the mean equals the mode. Yeah, in the normal distribution, the mode is right there in the middle. It's the top, it's the peak, and the and the and it's also the mean. It's it's the balance point for the distribution. Also for C, the mode equals the median. Yeah, because it's symmetrical, the median's right there in the middle. So the mean, the median, and the mode are all the same in a in the normal distribution. The last one, skewness, which has to do with being asymmetrical. And the normal distribution, because it is symmetrical, is skewness is zero. And so anyhow, uh, even if you didn't know what the normal value of kurtosis was, you could work by process of elimination and, and cross out B, C, and D and end up with A. Number nine, the visual difference between bar graphs and histograms is that in blank, the bars touch each other, and in blank, the dars, bars do not touch. Now, a histogram is uh, something that you draw for quantitative uh, data, like interval and ratio level data like the number of kids or how many credits a person has or the time it takes to, you know, drive your car to school or whatever. Um, and uh, sort of a bell curve is kind of an example of a histogram. A bar chart, a bar graph is when you're indicating uh, different categories, um, like the people's favorite cereals. And what you have, the, the, the obvious difference is that in a bar graph, um, the bars do not touch. There's a space between them because the order is arbitrary. On the other hand, a histogram, which is the first one, uh, the the bars touch each other because they're they're just cutting off different bin sizes. And so in this one, um, it's not A because that gets the order backwards. It's B. So in histograms, the bars touch each other, and in bar graphs, the bars do not touch. As far as you know, seeing normal distributions and highly skewed distributions, that's just that's just irrelevant. And uh, D, none of the above are true. No, uh, that's not correct because B is correct. In histograms, the bars touch each other, and in bar graphs, they don't. Okay, number ten. Compared to the normal distribution, a leptokurtic distribution has bl a blank than the normal distribution. Leptokurtic is a skinny. Lepto means a thin, and kurtic has to do with the bulge. So it's tall and skinny. And what you're going to have here is it's not a more rounded peak. That might be true of a platocurtic one. Um, more elongated tail. Now, that's something we typically associate with uh, uh, skewed distributions, and so watch out for that one. A taller peak. Uh, yeah, that's going to be true because basically... Because it's concentrated in the middle, and it's gonna it's gonna end up having a taller peak than a normal distribution. Um, flatter peak would be for a platocurtic distribution, a flatter one. So the answer on number ten is C, a taller peak. Finally, uh, for this section, eleven. If the dots on the scatter plot generally extend from the bottom left to the upper right of the diagram, but are very widely spread out, so bottom left to upper right is an uphill pattern. And widely spread out means the dots are all over the place, but there is this pattern. The researcher report this correlation as, uh, well, strong and positive. Okay, 
the positive and negative here. Positive means it's an uphill relationship from bottom left to top right, and that is what we have here. So it's a positive relationship. Strong and negative, of course, would be downhill from top left to bottom right. The strong and the weak has to do with how close the dots are to the uh, to the pattern. If they're all really close to each other, then it's a strong relationship. If they're spread out a lot, it's a weak relationship. Now these ones, it says very widely spread out, so it's a weak relationship. So what we have here, strong and positive, uh, well it's positive but it's not strong because they're spread out. Strong and negative, they're not close together so they're not strong and it goes uphill so it's not negative, it's positive. C, weak and positive, that is the correct answer. It's positive because it goes uphill, but because the points are really spread out, it is weak. And that's where we're going to stop for this section. I'll pick up in the next video with item number 12.